Hello and welcome. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Tonight, Department of State Services v. Arrest Convener of Revolution Now Protest on Moyele Shore, barely 24 hours after releasing him on the orders of the Federal High Court. President of the Nigerian Bar Association provides a legal perspective on the rearrest of Bisasha Ware. Minister of Transportation Chibike Amechi attacked at a climate change event in Spain. Diaspora Commission Chairman condemns the act. And police in India kill four men suspected of raping and killing a young female doctor in Hyderabad last week. On business news tonight, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria affirms support for federal government's policy on land border closure. On sports news tonight, defending world heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz Jr. and challenger Anthony Joshua weighed in for their much-anticipated boxing rematch. And from Abuja, All Progressives Congress National Chairman Adam Zoshomole remains confident that his party will not lose a do despite the crisis rocking the party in the state. Barely 24 hours after their release from detention, the Department of State Services has rearrested the convener of the hashtag Revolution Now protest, Mr. Amoyele Showare, and his co-defendant, Mr. Wali Bakari. The SS operatives met with stiff resistance for about an hour when they attempted to arrest the two men at the premises of the Federal High Court in Abuja today. Eventually, Mr. Showare and Mr. Bakari were taken away in the vehicle of their lawyer, Mr. Femi Falano, to the DSS headquarters, where they are now being held. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, has the rest of the story. <laughs> Mr. Moyele Shore and his co-defendant Olawale Bakari after their release on Thursday evening by the Department of State Services following an order by Justice Ijoma Ujuku that they be released within 24 hours. No sooner had they returned to the court to give a report of the release as ordered by Justice Ijoma Ujuku, the DSS operatives swooped on Shore and Bakari a few yards from Court 7 where Justice Ijoma Ujuku was still presiding over other cases, forcing them to retreat into the court. The attempt was initially resisted by Shoare and his supporters, alongside police officers attached to the court, who insisted that the two men cannot be arrested inside the court. Before they kill me, yes. this, is an assault, this is an attempt to assassinate me in yes. court. Yes. They came with a gun and they were trying to shoot and they dragged me down yes. in front of a judge yes. after I've been granted bail. Yes. The prosecutor insisted that the court is seized of the fact that they have been released. However, counsel to the defendant, Mr. Femi Falana, informed him of a plan to rearrest his client. It has been said in open court, in compliance with the order of the court, which granted bail to the defendants, the DSS, that the federal government of Nigeria released Mr. Shore and Bakare yesterday, the 5th of December. 2019. No, but they are being rearrested now. No, 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 no. They are being rearrested. So you don't? But you have assured the court. However, with the intervention of Mr. Falana, the defendants were allowed out of court with their lawyers, insisting that they cannot be arrested inside the courthouse. Can I advise you to go out? You cannot arrest in the premises of the court. Please, can you walk out? This, this is state. You cannot Part arrest in the premises of the court. Who is your head? I think it's a demo. They will not talk. Don't so mind them. PSO yeah. is there. The so please, there. can we move? Yes, sir. Mr. Shore and Bakari also refused to get into the DSS vehicle. However, a truce was reached for a DSS driver to drive the car carrying the defendants, but they refused that an armed personnel accompany them in the vehicle. 
Supporters of Shore again refused the security operators from taking them away, or with the intervention of their lawyers, the two men were driven off to the DSS headquarters where they were detained. Amaka Okafu, Channel Television News. It has been impossible to get comments from the DSS about today's arrest, but there has been a barrage of reactions from prominent Nigerians. And one of them is the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, who describes the drama as the worst disdainful and brazen attack on the legal system. He condemns the attempted rearrest of Mr. Showare and Mr. Bakari within the court premises as a rape on the sanctity of the court. According to the former vice president, the act of the DSS is tantamount to the disregard of the rule of law. In his words, without the rule of law, there can be no rule at all. Power in Nigeria still flows from the people and not from the barrel of a gun. I call on all men and women of goodwill not to keep quiet or sit on the fence at times like this. He's also asking that an inquiry be made into the matter and everyone found culpable in the maltreatment meted on Justice Ijoma Ujuku be sanctioned. Nobel laureate Professor Wolesho Inka has also come down hard on the DSS operatives. In a statement, Professor Shoinka singled out the conduct of the Secret Service operatives at the Federal High Court in Abuja, saying he had earlier drawn similarities between plain thuggery and disobedience of court orders. In his words, I apologize for underestimating the DSS capacity for the unthinkable. I reiterate the nation's concern, indeed alarmed, about the escalating degradation of the judiciary through multiple means, of which disobedience of court orders is fast becoming the norm. He goes on to point out that disobedience of the judiciary orders can only lead to disregard of the authority of other arms of government. Professor Shoinka also asked President Muhammadu Buhari to call the DSS to order. We're now being joined on the news at 10 by the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Paul Usoro, to look at the latest spate of events that the drama between the DSS versus Shuere. A pleasure having you on the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm sure you've seen the videos of what transpired in court today in Abuja and the eventual rearrest of Mr. Shuere and Mr. Bakari. So what's your reaction on this? I think we should look at it from different levels. The first one is the act of actually having um, armed people go into the well of the courts that's inside the court's room to arrest anybody. That is unheard of. It's a desecration of hallowed grounds of the courts. I could give you, there's one other place I could compare that with, where by convention and in any civilized country, it never happens. And that is the legislative um, 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 r r r place, that is the legislature. You do not go into the chambers of the lawmakers for the purposes of having to effect an arrest. And it's the same thing with having to go to a court you are desecrating a place where, in fact, you are supposed to uphold the rule of law. And in fact, what you're doing in effect and going in with people with guns is to effectively tell everyone that you're not obeying the rule of law, you're not under the rule of law, that might is right, that the very fact that you have guns and you have the force that you can do absolutely anything. That is a statement that you make. And that is the complete reversal 
of what the rule of law stands for. And that's the road that leads to anarchy. And Mr. Osoro, that brings me to my next question. There's been yes. some concerns lately about obeying court orders and court judgments in the land. Is it really a matter of choice when it comes to obeying court orders? No, incidentally, uh, we, Nigerian Bar Association, we had um, our National Executive Committee meeting only yesterday. And that's one of the things that we talked about that it's not a matter of choice. That sometimes, even having to obey those orders, it could be discomforting, but you don't have a choice. There's something else that we mentioned, and the release should come out by tomorrow. I would send it over to you. And that is that the governments that refuses to obey court orders erodes its moral authority to enforce orders. And when we're talking about enforcing orders, we're not talking about the government enforcing even the court's orders. We're talking about enforcing orders generally. For example, even having to tell people to pay tax. What right do you have as a government to expect the citizens to obey the orders that you make when you yourself are setting a terrible example in disobeying orders? Our lawyers have also been blamed for some of the problems facing the legal system. We've seen lawyers getting parallel injunctions in some cases in the same suit. Now, how does this give the average citizen confidence in the bar and the bench? All right. You know, that those, those things that people say, for example, parallel injunction, it really, there's nothing like that in law, really. Okay. Now, um, maybe what you're saying is that um, lawyers obtain certain kinds of injunctions or they obtain injunctions that stop certain things from being done. But that's precisely what I was talking about, that obeying the court's order may be discomforting. And that is an instance that you might cite and say, that is not very comfortable because somebody has stopped something that you perceive to be the right thing. But you see, it's not your perception that matters. The important thing is you have a court order that says you shouldn't do certain things. And if you do not agree with that court order, there's always a choice of having to take it upstairs, take it to the appellate court and get it determined and get it set aside. That is the process. But taking laws into your own hands and saying because a certain court order has been made, therefore you have to disobey it or you have to set it aside arbitrarily. Supposing all of us were to do it that way, where do you think Nigerian nation would be? <laughs> exactly. That's the point. So the government has a responsibility in making sure that we do not degenerate or go through that path, that we actually keep law and order. In fact, the first order of business for government is actually to maintain law and order. And the only way you can do that is by you yourself setting the example. And you must set that example by having to obey um, law and order. But by the way, let me state this. We're speaking of two different things here. And both of them are problematic. We're talking about disobedience of court orders. orders. That's bad enough. But actually going into a courtroom to effect an arrest, that is horrible. It, is, it should not be spoken of that any government agency has done something like that. I believe that the Nigerian nation deserves an apology from the DSS for what they had done today in courts. It is not only, it's not only a disgrace to the agency that did it, it is actually an embarrassment to us as a nation. Because don't forget, other people are hearing, other people are watching, and what do they think of us? Now, Mr. Zoro, quickly now, let's bring this conversation home. As a lawyer, what options do you think the Shore team should be looking at now? Now, again, let me separate and segment this. Do they have a right to arrest Shore? Do they have a case against Shore? That's a difference you all together. If they needed to arrest him, assuming that they have a reason to arrest, they could have waited outside, effect the arrest. And then, of course, the lawyers would have the option of challenging that arrest. They could go back to court that he had just been given an, a, a bell, and he has not at all breached the terms of that bell. That is a separate issue altogether. And then the lawyers can talk it out, and then the judge will make a determination. 
that is separate. That what, we are, what we are more concerned about and what we are horrified is the process that you affected the arrest. I don't know the reason why the DSS did what they did, or in other words, I don't know the reason, whether they have any reason to re-arrest him. I would like to hear from them. Did he breach the terms of his bail? Because those are the bases that you could say, all right, we have to re-arrest this fellow because he was given, it's a bit strange to me that he was only released a couple of hours earlier uh, 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 but I would like to hear, you never can tell, whether within those couple of hours he has breached the terms. But if he had breached the terms, it would be nice, particularly in these most embarrassing moments, for the DSS to come forward and say this is the basis. But even assuming you had that basis, should you have done it in this very horrible manner? The answer is no. No civilized nation does that. Nobody does that anyway. And we count ourselves to be civilized. We consider ourselves to be a country that is governed by laws. We consider ourselves to be bound by the rule of law. We shouldn't do things that bring us down at all. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Paul Osoro, for sharing your thoughts with us on the news at 10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In part two, after the break, court grants former AKT state governor Ayodele Farashe permission to travel abroad for medical treatment. That's in a moment. Stay with us. Thank you.